happening today? President Trump meeting with Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. This is at the White House uh, this afternoon, and then they're going to go to Mar-a-Lago in Florida for the weekend. Martha McCallum, host of the first 100 days on Fox News, is here. The president never stops. I mean, this is like the Energizer Bunny president. Yeah, it's interesting that he's taking him to Mar-a-Lago, I think. You know, I mean, they're meeting at the White House today. A lot of people and some presidents like to sort of do business and then, you know, kind of wash their hands of it and head off for their own private time. Um, this is a man who clearly likes to integrate his personal life and his, and his social life and his professional life. It's all some form of work, I think, for President Trump. And by the same token, it's, it's not going to be all, you know, hugs and kisses. Uh, yeah. We've got a $62 billion deficit with Japan, bigger than ours with Mexico. Yep. I mean, you could sell products in Mexico easier than Japan, so they're going to have some real tough conversation. Maybe that's why Abi came bearing gifts. It could be. Um, they generally do. Um, but it's good that they're talking to each other. You know, they have the TPP issue between them, uh, and obviously President Trump wants to minimize those deficits with countries like Japan and Mexico, um, and that's going to be on the plate, no doubt. And also, all, I think it was great that uh, it was a second visit, right, Mattis? Yeah. Uh, he, Mattis, rather, he went to uh, North uh, South Korea and then Japan because we've got a belligerent actor in China. Yeah. I think Japan kind of wants to know that we're go we've got their back. I do. Um, I think it's interesting that the president had a long chat with the president of China as well. Right. Um, and said that he was on board with the one China policy, right. which is a complete 180 from where he was on that when he took the phone call from uh, the leader of Taiwan. So, um, you know. President Trump told us when he was just Donald Trump on the campaign trail that, you know, he wanted to negotiate, that he was a great negotiator, that he wanted to redo these deals. And in, in order to do that, you've got to speak to people on both sides. Um, I think this is where he feels most comfortable, really. I think we've seen him lately in areas where he doesn't feel so comfortable. Um, but this, this is an area where I think he feels eminently comfortable. And, and I like that idea that, uh, you know what, you give a little, take a little, but that's how you cut deals. I do want to ask you about... Uh, Kellyanne Conway, we know she's a counselor to President Trump, under serious attacks uh, for talking about Ivanka Trump's clothing line. You did ask her about it last night. Let's take a listen. We're aware of that letter, and we're reviewing that internally. I'm just really happy that I spent an awful lot of time with the President of the United States this afternoon and, uh, and that he supports me 100 percent. We spoke about a range of matters, and he supports me 100 percent. In fact, it was a very heartening moment. All I can say to America's women is, at some point in your life, you ought to have a boss who treated me the way that the President of the United States treated me today. As we know, the mainstream media has been just, you know, t taking hits of her over and over again. But in this particular case, when you asked her about Sean Spicer saying that she had been counseled, that was a tough one for her. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, we all saw that moment in the White House briefing room yesterday. He said she has been counseled on that matter, which made it sound like she had been seated down and scolded. Um, she had a very different take. I was actually surprised that she did not want to comment on it last night. I think it says a couple of things. I think it says that they're taking the matter seriously. Uh, they know that this letter came out from uh, Congressman Cummings and Congressman Chaffetz, and that they say they believe it's an extremely serious matter. You know, I mean, she, she could have just said when I spoke with her last night, look, you know, I was half joking. It was inappropriate, and, and I would not do it again given the opportunity. Um, she chose not to say that for whatever reason. We'll initially, find out. she didn't say anything, though, right? She said, listen. She said, I have no comment on that initially. But mm. then you kept, you know, you nudged a little bit, and then it felt like the, the, the part about being counseled, uh, from, from what I'm hearing, is that Spicer was a little bit out of, shouldn't have said that. Apparently, the president, you know, reports are that the president wasn't happy about the word that he used because it made it sound as if she'd been scolded. And that's why she came back to let you know that she feels working for President Trump, it, that he has so far been the most amazing, empathetic, understanding employer possible. She, and, and it feels like that's essentially what she was trying to say is that yeah. Sean I, I, was wrong. We wanted, I wanted to establish a couple of things that she was acknowledged that she'd received that letter, uh, that the White House had received the letter from Chaffetz and Cummings, and also that she had spoken to the president about it and how, what did he, what was his reaction. It's not surprising given what we know about President Trump that he was glad that she supported Ivanka Trump. However, um, I think they do need to think about the language that they use with regard to these business relationships. They need to all be on the same page. Right. And perhaps, you know, the, the answer needs to be, well, those entities are separate now. She stepped away from the managerial role in that company. And um, so we don't have any comment on right. what those... And I don't even think it was about... Doing. I don't think for, for the president it was about economics or anything. It was just the personal battle, the personal animus toward members of his family 
and they should be off limits when it comes but, to stuff Charles, like that. But Charles, if the separation has happened, then they need to make that clear. Then they mm. need to say, sure, we wish that hadn't happened, and it affects people who work in that business. But she is not in that right. role anymore. Right. Um, and you know, I think they need to sort of all be on the same page about that. We'll see if, if that's what they decide. All right, and of course, uh, don't miss your show. The first 100 days of Martha McCallum, weeknights on Fox News Channel. You know it. You watch it 7 p.m. every night after you toggle from my show. Thanks a lot, Martha. <laughs> Thanks, Charles.